It was supposed to be just another news report, although admittedly for a special occasion. It was 123 days before the start of the Winter Olympic Games in Sochi, and I was in Greece for the lighting of the Olympic flame. The ruins of Olympia are one of the most famous monuments of ancient Greece, the site of the very first Olympic Games, where stones like this would have been part of the temple, the temple of, uh, temple of, That was all rather surreal. Definitely the weirdest dream I've had for a while. It was a memorable ceremony though, although I'm pretty sure the high priestess never spoke to me. What was it she'd said? Follow the flame or something? Oh, who knows? Well, I hope they like my report at least. So what's the top story this morning then? The Sochi 2014 Olympic flame has arrived in Moscow, seven days after it was first lit in the ancient Greek city of Olympia, carried by Russia's Deputy Prime Minister, Dmitry Korzak. The flame traveled in a small lantern to Red Square, where President Vladimir Putin spoke of its meaning for the Russian people. The Olympic torch, the symbol of the world's primary sports competition, of peace and of friendship, has come to Russia. This ceremony marks the start of the longest torch relay in Olympic history. The flame oh, it's great that so many people have turned out for the start of the Russian relay. It looks like a lot of fun out there. Hang on a minute. No, couldn't be. But it was. The stone I picked up in Olympia was on my mantelpiece. And if that isn't a sign, well, I don't know what is. I knew I had to get down to Red Square and experience the atmosphere for myself. Fortunately, they were having a two-day event. So from sunny Greece to a rather soggy Moscow, just at the very start of the torture's journey around the whole of Russia. I'm excited. The day's first runner was Paralympic star Alessia Vladikina, who'd picked up two gold medals in the Beijing and London Games. After two Olympic gold medals, is this still something special for you? Of course, it's a unique feeling, because I had never carried the Olympic torch before. At first, I ran with it quite easily. Then, I felt it was becoming heavier and heavier, but I was determined to carry it properly and show it to everyone so that they could all appreciate the moment. Her delight and the crowd's reaction were infectious. I'd missed out on going to my home games in London, and I was determined not to let Sochi 2014 pass me by. There were 14,000 torchbearer slots up for grabs, and one of them was going to be mine. When we were um, making the technical order for the factory, we say, look, guys, let's make a thing which you want to have yes. at home. You know, so you, it should be desirable. It should be like, wow.
a lot of questions were uh, with the weight of mm. it. It's quite heavy. Mm -hmm. We have to take off the uh, cover and we uh, milled out by the machine uh, extra weight of the aluminum. Right. So it's very fine. It's the feather. Feather of the myst mysterious uh, bird, uh, fire bird, in uh, Russian epos, epic uh, stories and fairy tales. And to get this feather from the fire bird is a super challenge for the hero. The problem can be when the wind goes underneath here and it just cuts the fire. Yep. But in this case, we have a special nickel uh, wiring inside, which melting mm. kind of like really red color, and it picks up the fire. So basically, it's reef firing itself. I was going to have to wait a while before I found out if I'd been picked as a torchbearer. More than enough time to try and learn a little more about my mysterious stone. Some of Russia's most eminent geologists live in Yakutia, the center of Russia's diamond industry. And the rocks down here are the most expensive in the country. The pit descends more than a kilometer under the earth and uses the most sophisticated drilling equipment on the market to get at the precious ore. Once the stones have been dug out, they're taken to a sorting center and closely examined. Each rough gem is appraised and valued, and I had a close eye focused on my precious stone too. Mm. It must be some kind of limestone. I can see small crystals here, proving that it's ancient rock. Mm -hmm. But really, it shouldn't light up, should it? Luminescent? <laughs> no, it's phosphor that's luminescent. As for marble, I don't know. Okay. Maybe you could make it luminescent if you really believed it. Right. Oh, thank you. What? Did you really expect it to glow? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'm just not right. There's certainly something very special about this stone and this ground. And I don't know, but it might just be because they're used to pulling glittering things out of the dark earth here. But for once, Mirny's diamonds weren't the top attraction in town. It was time to head towards the city's most well-known landmark, where they were getting ready to welcome some very special guests. For more than 40 years, these huge Bilaz trucks have been one of the most famous symbols in Yakutia, carrying the region's diamonds, to and from its quarries and factories. And now, it's getting ready for its most important passenger ever. It might have been close to minus 40 Celsius, but these Olympic torches and torch bearers are made of stern stuff. This huge quarry has been the frozen heartbeat of the city for more than 50 years, producing more than $17 billion of diamonds. My stone had meant I was here to watch the parade. But what was I supposed to do next? Ah, great shot. Oh, man, I'm jealous of these guys. Right, so, where to, mate? Where to? OK. Show me the way. Oh, like by Carl. Good choice. There can be few more famous natural landmarks in Russia than Lake Baikal, 
the oldest and deepest lake on the planet and the site of a very special Olympic celebration. For the first time ever, they're planning to light the Olympic flame underwater. Obviously, in this case, your average torch isn't going to cut it. So special equipment is required and special people to carry it. And who better than the local rescue ranger? Our professional activity is mostly dedicated to rescuing people on Lake Baikal. Our job is important, difficult, interesting, and in a way, romantic. Baikal has many faces. In winter, it's tough, and in summer, it's beautiful. You can't help but admire its power. It attracts you, and it's very important to me, because it's a jewel of Russia. Ready? Yeah, everything's ready. Let's go, then. As Nikolai puts the final touches to his equipment, the excitement begins to build along the water's edge. The torch rallies have been warmly welcomed across the country, but the crowds here are about to witness something that's never been done before. And there's plenty of local showmen on hand to entertain them while they wait. A mass of noise and color to cheer the torchbearers on. This torch is based on a special system. There is a pyrotechnic charge that can burn at any depth, in any temperature, and under any circumstances. When it's underwater, it's like a second sun. The flame literally illuminates the entire lake bottom. When you carry it, you can feel its enormous power. The water temperature is four degrees Celsius. It's really freezing. We could feel it on our uncovered faces, but we were united by this flame that had absorbed the energy of the entire country, of every single person who cares about the flame. That was what united us, and that's why everything went perfectly. As I watched from out on the water, you could almost feel the crowd's energy coming across the waves. It had been another remarkable spectacle for this record-breaking torch relay. I was wondering what could possibly top it. it looks like I'm on the right track. So what now, buddy? I'd moved from one ship to another, but what a ship. I was on board the icebreaker 50 years of victory, the pride of the Russian nuclear fleet, for a truly once in a lifetime experience. The Olympic flame was traveling to the North Pole and I was going with it. If my stone was telling me to follow the flame, I was gonna take it as far as I could. 1,300 nautical miles of stark, beautiful ocean lay between us and the top of the world. Well, just in case you didn't actually believe we were going to the North Pole, I think that eliminates any doubt, doesn't it? It's another historic first for the Sochi torch, and a relay round the ship was planned for the occasion. You can learn so many new things. You get the chance to test your own as well as the crew's experience and check what the icebreaker is really capable of. I mean, this tour of the Olympic torch to the North Pole, never before has a surface ship gone there so late in the season. The ice was much heavier, and to cope with it, we almost needed the icebreaker's maximum power. We were making incredible progress, slicing through the thick polar ice like butter. And after only four days, we were already near our destination. That's a world record pace. We've made it. Latitude 90 degrees north. That's it, top of the world, people. 
Lions! Once the champagne had been finished, everything kicked into gear. The torchbearers went off to get ready, and our organising committee began making preparations for the relay. We close one, open the other one, and then try to hold it the right way. Good. All right, all right. good. <laughs> With everyone in position, we were ready to go, and our captain was given the honour of starting off the run. My main task was to keep the torch warm and make sure it got into Pat's hand in time. And just seconds later, she was away and I was on collection duty. I think that's for me now. Thank you very much. Yes, so I've got to take and uh, look after this and return it later. How was it? Good? It's all right, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Got through it? No slips? No. No? <laughs> We stepped off the ship and onto the ice. The torches glow flickering through the pitch black polar nights. A pioneering Soviet polar explorer, Artur Chelengarov, would ignite the cauldron at the most northerly place on the planet. It's not often you get to witness a moment of history. This is the first time that the Olympic flame has ever been lit at the North Pole and I'm here to see it. From as far north as it's possible to go, it was time to head east with the Olympic Organising Committee. The Flame, the IP that it is, has its own security team at all times, not to mention its own private jet. We've got this uh, special service. Uh, we've got the Flame Keepers, which is just responsible for the security of Toshbury and the Flame. They keep the Flame in a little land and which work uh, on the special fuel. In order, uh, this Flame will never go out. We are friends! We are one country! Each city's greeting ceremony is unique and hundreds of volunteers help make the occasion memorable. Their responsibility also to keep the security for the torchbearer uh, in order nobody will harm it and nobody will get the special uh, place uh, just near the torchbearer because it's just a flame and it's very dangerous for everybody. This is Kamchatka, a volcanic peninsula that's one of the most easterly places in Russia. Hold it higher so that you don't burn yourself when your torch is lit. For the good fortune, we've got never tax to the flame and torch burning in Russia because in every region, uh, everybody, every inhabitant of the city is just very proud that uh, comes to his city. I must say that uh, population in our country are very warm. It was the end of another relay, and I was in one of the most beautiful places in the country, on the shores of the Pacific itself. But I was beginning to lose patience. I've come to the end of Russia. For what? What do you want? Where am I supposed to go now? I'd literally run out of land, but the torch would move on, over mountains, across the sea, even out of this world. And we have lift off. In yet another historic moment, it paid a visit to the International Space Station, more than 400 kilometers above the planet. 
And although safety reasons made lighting it on board a heavily fueled rocket a rather bad idea, the world's first Olympic spacewalk was no problem. Back down on Earth, I was getting some inspiration of my own. Yes, I'm in. I'd come so far with the torch, I was going to have to see it through to the end. I'd watched so many different people in relays all over Russia and even beyond. Now I was going to have my own moment with the symbol of the Sochi Games. I was in Ufa in the south of the country. In under two hours, I was going to be a torchbearer. Yeah, 194, my official uniform. Get this on. Okay. It was time to suit up and pick up the most vital piece of equipment. I think. Yeah, that's me. I'll see you after that, uh, English training. Okay? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Ah, my very own torch, at last. <laughs> More than 200 of us would be running through the streets and the excitement was already beginning to build. There was just time for a few tips on how to make the most of the moment. Smile and wave your hand. Then they put out my torch and I step back and I'm not there anymore. It's your turn, you start. And I begin. The car that will be filming us starts to move and we run towards it. Okay, got it. Russian friends! <laughs> You're welcome. None of us could wait to get started, and the party was in full swing as we moved through the city. Thousands of people had turned out to cheer us on and watch the parade. And we even had a few guests from the North Pole putting in an appearance. We were dropping off people every 200 meters, so I just had a few minutes to get to know my neighbor Karanil, number 195. You can really imagine how exciting it is. I'm looking forward to the moment when the whole country will see me. Honestly, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's cool, but it's really freezing today, isn't it? Friends, let's meet our torchbearer! As I waved to the crowd, I hadn't expected to be so nervous. My whole epic journey had led to this moment. And as I waited for number 193 to pass me the flame, all I could think of was, for goodness sake, don't drop it. That. Opa. <laughs> this is a dream come true. After I missed all the atmosphere of the London 2012 Games, I never thought I'd have the chance to be part of another Games. And now I'm the only person in the world holding the Olympic flame at this moment. Fantastic. Hello, Ufa! Woo! I think I finally understand. I've got a little further to go with this torch. <sighs> I was with it when it was lit for the very first time in Olympia in Greece. It went deep underground into diamond mines in Yakutia. I was with it when it plunged into the waters of Lake Baikal. And I was with it when the winds buffeted it at the very top of the world. And then it went out of this world to the International Space Station. Ancient alchemists used to believe that if you could combine the four elements of fire, earth, water, and air, you could turn base metal into gold. This torch has all of those elements, and even a fifth element, the quintessence from space itself. I believe that this torch has the energy to help you win gold in Sochi. Russia, believe in us.
Now the power is in our hands. Onward to victory!